Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will learn about frequency response. Now, the basic concept is that if you let the amplitude of a sinusoidal source to remain constant and vary the frequency, and then we note down the variations in the output, this will be called the circuit frequency response that is how the circuit responds to the change in frequency a simple example could be uh, testing of a microphone uh, if we apply various signals uh, starting from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, keeping the amplitude same and if you see the response of the uh, output so as it is shown here this is generally very very flat so this will be considered to be a good microphone so this is the frequency response behavior of the microphone and the same uh, logic applies to the circuits so we'll define a transfer function Transfer function is the ratio of output to input. And if we have a network like this, where we are applying an input signal, uh, S omega, and we get an output signal, which is Y omega, then the ratio of the two, ratio of the output to input is called the transfer function, H omega. Omega is representing that we are working in frequency domain. Since the output or the input could be either voltage or current, there are four possibilities uh, that we could get. The first one is if both are voltage, so if input is voltage and we are getting a voltage output, then this transfer function will be called voltage gain. Now, if we have a current input and a current output, then this will be called current gain. Similarly, if we have a current input and we get a voltage output, then this will become an impedance. As you know that voltage over current becomes impedance. So, this is called transfer impedance. And lastly, if we have a voltage input and we get a current output, then this will be called transfer admittance. I over V, as we know, is called admittance. So these are the four possibilities. Okay, so this transfer function is a complex quantity. We represent it by H omega, and it has uh, a magnitude, which is H omega, H uh, not bold. This H is bold which is h omega is the magnitude and it has a phase angle so we can write it like this that the complex uh, frequency res response or, trans or sorry transfer function is h omega magnitude with a phase angle of phi and this the transfer function can be expressed as a ratio of numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial. So we uh, we assuming that the transfer function has a numerator and denominator, and the numerator could be uh, consisting of various uh, f fractions. And similarly, uh, the denominator could have various uh, parts, various groups. Now, if we put all these uh, groups as equal to zero, then the answer that we get is called zero of the transfer function. And similarly, if we put the denominator parameters equal to zero, uh, zero each of each of them, then uh, this will be called poles of the transfer function. Why it is called poles? Because the moment denominator becomes zero, the amplitude will shoot high 
to infinity. So that is why it is called poles. Now the overall concept of uh, the effect of zero and poles are very clearly explained in this video by Cut uh, Kim Show. So you are encouraged to watch this video. Uh, to obtain a transfer function, first we uh, obtain the frequency domain equivalent of the circuit and as we have learned earlier also, uh, the re resistance remains resistance as in case of a phaser, resistance remains resistance. The inductor becomes J omega L and the capacitor becomes 1 over J omega C. Okay, so let's uh, clarify our concept with the help of this example. We want to obtain the ratio of output voltage divided by input voltage. So we want a voltage gain actually and uh, this is the time domain uh, voltage Vm cos omega t. So as we discussed we convert this into frequency domain. So converting into frequency domain uh, this will become Vm or Vs capital we write here and R remains same and C becomes 1 over J omega C and Vt now becomes capital V0. And by voltage deviant rule we can get the output uh, equals uh, the, the uh, impedance across which we want to find the voltage, so 1 over J omega C uh, divided by the total impedance, so this is the total impedance and multiplied by the input, so this is uh, we have learned the technique of voltage division, so we apply that to get the output and since we know that the, we just defined that the transfer function is the ratio of the our output of the input, so we will bring this here, so this will become the transfer function, so V out over Vs, so this is the remaining and uh, we can uh, solve or simplify, so the final answer is 1 over J omega RC. Now before we go further, we, um, we, we remember that if we have a transfer function which is given in the form of a numerator and denominator, then the magnitude is the magnitude of the numerator divided by the magnitude of the denominator. So this is the magnitude of the transfer function and the phase angle of the transfer function will be the phase angle of the numerator minus the phase angle of the denominator. So this we have to remember uh, to find out the magnitude and phase angle. So for the previous example, so this is what we got uh, after uh, the division. So 1 over 1 plus J omega RC is the transfer function. Now we will simplify it further. We put 1 over RC equals to omega naught which is called the critical frequency. So the transfer function will become 1 divided by 1 plus j omega and for 1 over rc we put omega naught. So this is now our uh, transfer function. We will try to find its magnitude and phase angle. Now if we recall um, from the complex we knew that if z is x plus j y then its magnitude is x square plus y square under root and its angle was 10 inverse uh, y over x that is the imaginary divided by the real part. So same technique here if we just consider the uh, denominator part which is 1 over uh, j omega over omega naught then its magnitude will be 1 square and uh, omega divided by omega naught square under root and its phase angle will be 10 inverse omega divided by omega naught, the imaginary part divided by the real part. So this was for the denominator, now for the whole it will be uh, 1 divided, so
so the magnitude is 1 divided this thing. So this is the magnitude and the phase angle uh, if when it goes up it will become uh, a minus sign added here. So it will be minus 10 universe omega over omega naught. So this is very important. We have to remember this because in future uh, questions we will have a similar type of a transfer function then we straight away put these two values. And from uh, both of these you can see that they are frequency dependent, dependent depending on omega, uh, depending on omega. So as the frequency increases or decreases their value will change. So the gain and phase functions are frequency dependent and together reveal how a circuit responds to input sinusoids of different frequencies. And here is uh, a representation of the magnitude uh, and uh, phase angle, the plot of H and phase angle phi. So from here you can see if for different values of uh, omega over omega naught, so omega naught is fixed because it is dependent on the parameter of the circuit RC. So just by varying omega different values on when omega is 0, the magnitude is 1. So here is the magnitude and the phase angle is 0, so phase angle is 0. Then when omega is, uh, uh, this ratio is equal to 1, it is 0 0.7071 and gradually it is decreasing. So this is the behavior of the magnitude. So that means the output will keep on decreasing gradually as we increase the frequency and the phase angle will uh, keep on going towards negative and it will flatten at minus 90 degrees. So this is uh, an example uh, we will see later on of a what is called low pass filter. It is allowing the low frequency signal to go and it is gradually attenuating the high frequency signals. Okay, now let's do an example. Here is the circuit. We need to find the output over input transfer function, output over input. So again, as we did in the uh, last case, by VDR, we can uh, get the output voltage. So input voltage divided by the total uh, impedance multiplied by the impedance across which we want to find the voltage. Uh, so this is J omega L divided by the total impedance multiplied by the input signal gives us the uh, output and we have to obtain transfer function so we bring this uh, down. So the transfer function is now V out over V S and this is what is remaining here and so this could be written as the magnitude and phase angle. We have to find its magnitude and phase angle as we did and as we explained earlier also we uh, get in because now here it is inductor the value of omega naught will be now R over L. In case of a capacitor it was uh, 1 over RC. In case of inductor we uh, take the uh, value of omega naught as R over L. So putting or replacing R over L uh, from here we divide everything the numerator and denominator by R. So this becomes our equation and for L over R we put omega naught. So this is our final equation. And so from here the magnitude uh, we discussed that the magnitude will be magnitude of the numerator divided by magnitude of the denominator. So the magnitude of the numerator is omega over omega naught and the magnitude of the denominator we saw earlier is it is 1 over uh, omega divided by omega naught square. And now in this case the, the phase angle as we mentioned the phase angle of the numerator and minus the phase angle of the denominator. 
So the phase angle of the numerator because there is a j here and j means 90 degree. So it is written as pi by 2 minus we already know the, uh, the phase angle of the uh, denominator that is 10 inverse omega divided by omega naught. So this becomes the final answer. And if we uh, start plotting, so this is the uh, magnitude when omega is 0, so this becomes uh, 0 and this will also become 0. So we are starting from 0 at uh, omega naught uh, 0 and the extreme is when omega is infinity, then this becomes a very large quantity and this is also uh, one could be ignored because this will become very large. So the square and under root will cut, so it will be omega over omega naught at the denominator and omega over omega naught at the numerator and so the answer will be 1. So at infinity the magnitude will be 1. So when the frequency increases very high the magnitude approaches 1. And in between uh, when omega is equal to omega naught, so this becomes 1, this also becomes 1, so 1 square. So 1 plus 1 is under root 2, so the amplitude will be 1 over under root 2. So this was uh, the magnitude part and similarly we can find the value of the phase by putting omega um, 0 when omega becomes 0, so 10 uh, 0, uh, this will become 0, you know 10 0 is at 0, so the uh, phase will be 5 by 2 or 90 degree. And similarly, when this becomes uh, infinity, we know that ten tangent infinity is at 90 degrees. So this part will become 90 degree. So 90 minus 90 will get an answer 0. And uh, when they are equal, so 1045 is equal to 1. So that means this angle will become 45 degree. So 90 minus 45 will get 45 degrees. So this is how you calculate and plot the magnitude and the